You run, don't you? It's a habit with me. So now I'm briefed. So what? Frank thought I shouldn't come here, but I thought... Excuse me, Steve. I said, namely, you shouldn't go around wild blaming people without justification. But I thought you might have a faint idea how that item originated. Why me? Why not you? What? Oh, that's your idea of logic, huh? I go to the judge and I say, I didn't murder the man, but the judge says to me, why not you? Look, there's only two men in this town who could be responsible for that smear. You or Hunsecker or both. Hunsecker and Elwell are enemies to the knife. So how do you get him doing J.J. a favor? It is a favor, isn't it? Dallas, your mouth is as big as a basket and twice as empty. I don't like you, period. But neither do I go along with this column saying you smoke uh, marijuana and belong with the Reds. Also, since we're talking repulsive, J.J. won't like this for two cents. Don't give me that look, Dallas. J.J. believes in fair play. And secondly, this could splatter his sister with rotten egg by implication. Uh, you're the boyfriend. You're talking very fast. Well, I'll tell you what. Excuse me for breathing, will you? How do you like this stupid banjo player? He comes into my office. Look, boys, wise boys, guy. Boys, boys, this gets nobody nowhere. You're overexcited, Steve. Frank, don't apologize for Excited me. and with good reason, I wanted to say. This endangers the future of the whole quintet. Should I cry? People catch on very quick to such an item. Van Cleve already called me. He's firing the quintet. So what are you doing here? Go over there and fight. Look, if Van Cleve fires your boy, that'll give that liar ring a truth. I want to speak to Miss Hunsecker, please. Hello? Susie, this is Steve. Steve. Now, don't be alarmed, but I want you to take a look at Elwell's column in the record. Today. Now it's about me. A smear. A smear? What, what kind of a smear? Where are you? We're on our way to the Elysian to dicker with Van Cleve. He's fired us already. Well, look, I'll call you later, dear. Goodbye. Come on, Frank. I told Steve what I really think he'd tear your head off. Tell him. No. I'm interested in his future. I still think he's responsible for the smears. Not that I'm convinced, but you'll never prove it in a thousand years. Steve, if you'll do what you want, but it can't hurt. He offers you an olive branch, so do they like olives? Excuse me. Steve, before we go in, could I... Hi. Just in time. J.J. just finished up his rehearsal. Looks like a wedding. You look lovely, dear. Steve, you've met my brother? Of yes. course. Frank? Well, son, looks like you went out and got a packet of trouble for yourself, hmm? You've been very kind about it, Mr. Hunsaker. Ah, give Susie credit for that. I took her word there was nothing to the smear. As a matter of fact, I'll have plenty to say about smears on my show today. And that's why I'd... Well, I'd like your personal assurance, too. Mr. Hunsaker, there is nothing to the smear. You have my sincere word. I'll buy that. Now, you do me a favor. Be good to my kid sister. Yeah, she's had a lot of trouble for a kid. Susie has her girlish secrets. But in her heart of hearts, I imagine, Dallas, she fancies you in an uncommon way. Now, how about you? Not just, uh, well, not just Tom canning around, I hope. J.J. Steve is now, not... Now, take it easy, Susie. Steve wouldn't be much of a man if he didn't understand my concern, now, would you? No, I wouldn't. Serious as a deacon. I like it. I like it fine. 
In a world of old rags and bones, I like it. Here's that table. Now, you take Sydney here. If Sydney ever got anywhere near Susie, I'd take a baseball bat, break it over his head. Hey, Joe. Sydney lives so much in Marl Twilight that when I told him you were coming here today, he predicted disaster. Said you wouldn't take my favor. He said you'd chew up the job and spit it right back in my face. Any truth in that? Well, since you bring no, it up, Mr. Hunsaker, and now if I can amplify... Don't amplify. Steve would like to thank you for this favor. You don't listen very good, do you, Frank? J.J. just said to keep your mouth shut. Look, don't you think it's about time you shut yours? I didn't hear Who you. Who are you to tell a man like Frank D'Angelo? Look, shut up. Steve, this isn't important. <sighs> Does he have to be here? Well, why? Has he bothered you before? Is it news to you? Well, now, look, son, a lot of people tell me I'm a very gifted man. But I still can't see around corners. Now, just what exactly are you so hot about? I mean, I know it's a difficult thing to be an artist in this crudest of all possible worlds, but look, I'm not here as an artist. I'm here as an average Joe who happens to love your sister. Well, just be careful you don't knock her off her feet, hmm? Sandy, move it to your right, little bit. Now, frankly, son, I lost you on that last hill. Just give us the punchline. Steve. There's no punchline. Yeah, I was just admiring your know-how, yours and Falco's. Why do you keep coupling me with Falco? Why is he here? Tell me, sir, when he dies, do you think he'll go to the dog and cat heaven? Look, let's forget about dogs and cats and all that pseudo-literary junk. I'm gonna lay it right on the line. What about that ruckus in my office this afternoon? You were there, Frank. We're according to St. Dallas here. J.J. was responsible for the Elwell smear. Now, don't go wild, sir. Wild? Take a look at them and tell me who's wild. Well, what about it? Well, uh, Steve was overexcited. He didn't mean well, exactly. How did you mean it? JJ, look, I, I was in my... Quiet, all of you. Susie, sit down. This requires investigation. Well, how did you mean it? Well, come on, come on. I'm waiting. Look, I don't take kindly to you and Falco teaching me ethics. Who's the injured party here, you? Right now, you have no right to ask questions. And your snide rib... Wait a minute. I haven't handed over punishing privileges to you yet. Just lay the whip down. Maybe I'll respect what you're saying. Steve. Shut up. Susie, did you know about this accusation? No. Before you leave, son, I'll answer your question. Susan Hunsker's the injured party here. Or perhaps next you'll be telling me I don't have my sister's welfare at heart. Mr. Hunsaker, you've got more twists than a barrel of pretzels. Did you hear that, Susie? Continue, please. Well, I can't cope with them, that's all. You're too shrewd for me, so I'll just be honest. Susie and I are in love. We want to get married. Give him credit. The boy's goal is gorgeous. Why don't we hear what Susie has to say? That's out of you, Dallas, but perhaps Susie may not care to air her views in public. Susie? Susie, as always, is free to say anything she wants. Go on, dear. Say exactly what's on your mind, dear. Those dears sound like daggers. Why don't you stop daring her to speak? What is this? What are you trying to I'm do? I'm trying to get Susie to stand up to you, but your manner is so threatening she's afraid to speak. To speak. Son, you raise your voice once more. Please, please, stop. JJ, JJ. I'm sorry, Susie. Son, it looks like we may have to call this game on account of darkness. If the looks could kill, I'd be dead. No, I don't care about you. My whole interest, if it's not too late, is in Susie. And how to undo what you've done to her. And what have I done to her except not buy her a new fur coat lately? You were right, Sidney. This boy is a dilly. Why? Because I don't like the way you toy with people? Your contempt and malice? I'm sorry, Frank. You think about yourself and about your column. To, to you, you're some kind of a, of a national glory. But to me, and a lot of people like me, your slimy scandal and your phony patriotics, to me, Mr. Hunsecker, you're a national disgrace. Son, I don't relish shooting mosquitoes with elephant guns. Suppose you just shuffle along and call it a day. 
But my day with Susie isn't over yet. Here's your head. What's your hurry? 